I'm Will. I'm here from WorthPoint. WorthPoint is a company we started five years ago to help people deal with valuing items in their house and understanding what they own. And I'm here today with Laura Truman. And Laura is a friend of mine and has encountered a problem that we all go through and how to deal when one or both of our parents dies and how to handle the estate. What do you do when a, a, a parent dies? We're going to film over the next week about how we're dealing with Laura's estate here in Florida. Neither one of us are here in Florida. That I came down from Atlanta and Laura lives in New York. And we thought we'd use this, in a way, sad situation to try to, how do we help other people in seeing what one person goes through. Cleaning a house here in Florida, we have to sell a house in Florida. How do we understand what's here and sell it and get money to deal with the expenses and hopefully help take care of her mom in the future who's still a survivor of the estate. We actually had an estimate today on cleaning out the house and all the trash that we end up leaving for the grand total of $150. So I think Laura negotiated really good that <laughs> we're having the vents cleaned, the windows cleaned, the rug steam cleaned, and the trash taken away. And I've told Laura how we want to try to organize things is this we want to keep and for the family. Uh, this we want to take over to the, the flea and sell. And we have another pile uh, of smaller things that we're going to value and understand what to do with right. it and be more careful in the disposition of it. Right. Understand the value first. And lastly, we're going to have a pile that the cleaning lady's taken away for her 150 right. feet. So I assure you that will be a big pile, but anything we can get for a dollar on up, we're going to take over to the flea market. We got realtors coming through and looking at the house because we're going to get the house on the market. We got down here Tuesday night and we thought about it ahead of time. We got a round trip airline ticket from New York for about 200 bucks. And I'm in a brand new Suburban for $25 a day. Thank you, National Rental Car. We'll give you a plug here. <laughs> we're going to be in and out of Florida handling this estate in four to five days while we're dealing uh, with the goods and inventorying the goods today, which we'll be doing. Uh, we have realtors here that are coming in and giving us estimates on how to handle everything here. And I told Laura what I want her to focus on is doing our job and deciding how to deal with the items. Remember, we have four piles we're making. What do we want to keep for the family? What do we want to toss out? What do we want to sell down here? And what do we want to keep to understand better before we sell later? I think what's really important is that people understand I've been a dealer for 15 years. An antique dealer. An antique dealer, okay. a memorabilia dealer. You know, so you would think I would be able to come in and deal with this, but I can't because it's too close to home. It's very, very personal. Having to go through my parents' personal items, touching their furniture, knowing somebody else is going to you know, want to buy it. It's, just, it's odd. It's weird. It's a whole, whole bunch of emotions. But the way you've outlined everything is so clear. Like, you know, this is for the greater good of having money for my mom to survive on and so it needs to be sold it's important to have a support system like worth point and what you've done for me i mean you've held my hand for a week okay before we got here telling me it's going to be okay this is what we're doing today you know and and keep reiterating to me this is our list keep focused that's really important you've like kept me on a schedule and people don't understand until they go through this it's so important because you get unfocused yep. a lot. And there's there's things to keep in mind in this whole process. I mean, and you look at why did I start WorthPoint? Uh, because going through this with my mom and her downsizing, especially after my dad's death, and my dad was a vet, so being on fixed income, um, you know, going into a jewelry store. And my mom had taken a $5 coin into the jewelry store to get some extra cash. It's a quarter ounce of gold and a $5 US coin. And the jeweler offers her $25 for it. And putting aside the date of the coin and the scarcity possibly of it, it's $400 of gold. So for $400 of gold, she's being offered $25. Now my mom being in her late 80s thought that was a good deal. Right. But fortunately, she called me knowing the business I'm in and said, what do you think? And I said, Mom, get out of the store. And we have on WorthPoint every day over 200,000 people looking up values of antiques and collectibles. We use it all the time. Over 200,000. Yeah. And so we'll, 
look at that a little bit later as we look up some of the prices but uh, of items that we have in the house here but it's a great resource we have over a half a billion images online for people to compare their items to all right Laura we just had the first realtor come in and kind of break up our pattern here what did you learn well unfortunately I learned some shocking news okay the house is not where I thought we could price it and it's a bad market. It's a bad market. My parents are not going to recoup what they put into it. And maybe renting is an option. Yeah. What do you think? Well, well, I think she had some good news in there. That um, And she talked about $900 a month. Right, for renting. Versus 60 some thousand to sell. Yes, and if you think about what my parents put into this house, it was 140000 To get a return of only 60000 is but you could get a shame. Ten thousand dollars a month a year, yeah. and she only takes nine. So nine thousand dollars a year on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar investment. Right. That's not too bad given the rate of um, bonds today. What one and a half percent? So, you know, maybe renting's a good idea, and she does everything for you. So it might be an option for this house at this point. And you get some tax breaks. Right. Exactly. I I don't want my mom to lose money. And you know, so, so your mom gets $200 a week about, exactly. which is good money to go around. Right. All right, Laura, here's we have our four bidding systems. Right. These are things that you're going to keep that are personal to family. We have photos in here and personal family papers. You always find this going through people's items that right. you have to decide what do you want to keep in the family. Second, we have a bin here of things we're going to start to take to the flea market. Okay. And whereas we go through them, I'm going to have you put a sticker on them. We're going to agree to a price, uh, an asking price. Right. And that uh, we can always go down. You can never go up, but we want to price them reasonable to sell. Okay. Realizing we have two days at the market. There's a Staples in every city, and we'll make a plug for them here that we spent about $200 at Staples this morning. Right. And we got everything we need to clean. Um, trash bags, there's 75 of these. And if we need to go back in the morning, don't overbuy because you can always go back. Right. So it's right next to our hotel. We can go back there in the morning. And we got washable crayons so we can put prices on things and they wash off. We got some permanent crayons where we want to put prices on things and we don't want them changed when we're at the market tomorrow. Right. And uh, we got paper towels. We got Clorox cleaner. We got everything we needed for 200 bucks. So you don't need to spend more than that. And it was easier than Laura bringing everything down on the plane. Right. And um, so we're going to start with our bidding process here. So it's the four steps that you were telling me about. Yep. Which is? Family. Keep. Flea market. Right. Valuables we want to do more research okay. on later. And trash. Got it. Another thing that we're going through here is a large collection of Franklin Mint and Danbury Mint automobiles that were big in the 19, late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, but these were very, in some ways, over-collected. They're beautiful scale models, and in this case, I think a 1 to 24 inch model of a 1934 Packard car, and so these are very collectible. A lot of people are interested in them and want them, uh, but they have it in all cases gone up from what people paid for them back at that period. I think they ran about $100. So we'll look this one up on Worth Point, a 1934 Franklin Mint Packard. All right, so here I am on the Worth Point's iPad device, and we have 150 million items in our database, and we're now adding about 10 million a month of prices sold at different auction houses around the world, including eBay, which were the repository for eBay's collectibles and antiques sales from both the UK and the United States. So we have about 500 million pictures in there with 150 million items. So you can find almost anything in a house and estate when you come into there and say, hey, I want to find out what is this worth. And it's very useful for estate dealers use it all the time. Homeowners use it. Uh, 25,000 people are now subscribed to our database. And to show you how easy it is to find stuff in here, here's an iPad screen. Uh, with a WorthPoint browser and we get about 200,000 people a day into our website looking at different things. In the way of articles, we have tens of thousands of pages of articles 
on how to identify antiques, over a thousand books on a related site, marksandlibrary.com, where you can do research. So it's just so simple to type in here. Looking at this car, I have a boat tail Auburn Speedster made by the Franklin Mint. So I type in 1935 Auburn. Franklin Mint. I want to know the highest price of one that's sold in the last couple years that we have in our database. And $129. That's our car. So that's what we're going to try to sell it for at our estate sale. Okay, Laura. Well, we had one person come in today, and I want to talk about how there's often a setup in people coming to shop and trying to get into your sale. And it's one of the things we experience here today. Yes. So it's Big okay. Disappointments. We caught it in the bud. <laughs> yeah, no, you caught it in the bud. <laughs> that um, and I want to help people in regards to what to understand when people come and they want to approach you in regards to your sale. So here we had um, somebody that had been emailing us consistently because we advertised on Craigslist. Right. And that uh, we weren't t taking early shoppers. But we found out this is a huge amount of work, mm. loading all this stuff up. So this one person that had been very persistent while he was specifically interested in these Franklin and Danbury Mint cars, that um, he ended up um, saying he was interested in taking the whole estate off our hands. And so we called him last night and still had an interest in that or all the cars. And he came over today and what happened? Well, boy, was that shocking. He came in. He didn't look at anything in the garage where we have fabulous stuff. He walked straight for the cars, and he started picking and choosing through the cars. And he offered us a very low price, which we couldn't agree on. And then he went back, and he said, well, I just want a couple of cars. The interest was really in just buying a couple of cars that he probably wanted for his collection and cherry pick out of the best of the cars. Right. Uh, when we need to get, you know, our goal is to get a serious buyer. three to five thousand dollars out of all the cars. Absolutely. And which is still a good price, but we know our prices because we looked them up yesterday. On worth point. You need to carefully entertain the offers that are out there, and we have another uh, estate buyer coming in in the next oh, 15, 20 minutes. Right. And we'll see what they have to say, and that's the last chance. Then we load the truck. Right. And we'll be at the flea market on Friday. Laura. You know, let's talk about some of the things that we needed to do ahead of time. Uh, coming down here, our goal was to be out in a week. Yes. And that um, we've already packed the special items, either for you and your family. We've called those out, and we called out the high-value items uh, that we think ought to be sold online. So we've gotten part of our job done here already. What are some of the things that you did ahead of time uh, when we talked about the planning that needed to get done? Well, you had me call the movers. You had me go and rent a truck. These are all things I would not have thought about. But you gave me like the roadmap to how, what, what we should anticipate, what we should do. Uh, we got supplies that we, we had mailed down here so that we could tag stuff. I mean, we were so organized coming in that it's just amazing how you came up with that. And we've gone through a list of four realtors that you got? Yes. You had me do the realtors before we even got down here so that we were ready and they were able to come in the house yesterday. What have you learned from going through with the realtors? Each one has a different spin, and I always thought that, you know, it's in their best interest to make the most money, but a lot of them were just trying to downplay what the house is worth, and we picked out, me and you together, the fellow that we think we should go with because he has the same ideology as us. What has the realtor told you that you picked in regards to spending additional money on the house? And Well, we have to clean it. Shampoo the rugs, clean the windows, clean the baseboards. Um, these are all important things when you're selling a house that people look at. And the other thing we're going to do is get a couple of gallons of white paint and just paint the inside of the house so it's nice and bright. 
Okay, Laura. One of the things we, we've constantly reinforced as we've gone through the house over the last two days is the four different groups of things that we would have. Right. Uh, we would have things of high value, potentially, or that we needed to know more about that we wanted to put aside. And we showed yesterday, even with the Franklin and Danbury Mint cars, that we started looking up the values of them. Right. And using the Worth Point Worthopedia. With 150 million items in there, it's bound to have everything right. we're looking for. And we found everything that we were we looking sure for. sure did. And so the, so the first group are the higher value items, right. are the things we want to research, and we're going to set them aside. And the next group are things we're going to take to the flea market. Right. And that we have, for example, a bedroom set in here uh, that we will be taking to the flea market and hopefully getting a good price on. And the third group of items were the personal items, right? which you found a lot of your uh, couple of generations removed, I think three or yes. four generations removed yes. photos of relatives it's that amazing. you didn't know existed. Yeah, and it's amazing. It was a tearful moment. It was a tearful moment. And last but not least, we're standing in front of, of things <laughs> that, that are even, that we're trying to sell everything we can sell, but there is stuff that's going to go to the dump. Yeah. And so we have some of that accumulated here and that um, some tricks of the trade to learn though uh, as you aggregate things to go to the dump is look at them carefully. Right. And you know I can say that as people get older as, as Laura's parents were they tend to sometimes be worried about cash and so they'll stuff cash in clothing pockets. Did you find any? We we found a hundred dollars in the so, little pockets. There you go. We had money Zipped sewn up. away. <laughs> and another thing to always do is to get a bowl out for change you'll find. That you know, by the end of going through the house, you may find another hundred dollars right. in change. I knew even before I came down here that my parents had a lot of stuff in the house. I knew that the house had not been taken care of because they were older. And so I, I knew this was going to be a huge task ahead of me. I spoke to my friend Will from Worth Point, just off the cuff, and I told him what was going on. And he just, without even batting an eye, said to me, I'm going to come and help you. You need somebody to guide you. It's just going to be way too overwhelming because it's happening to you. I knew coming in, that my parents had some valuables. First of all, you're in a very fragile state. You've lost a parent or, you know, even putting them in a home. It is the same as a loss, you know, in a sense. And having somebody turn around and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Very organized, very thoughtful, road mapped out exactly how we're going to do it. This is what your tasks are. This is what our responsibilities are, uh, is super important because, quite frankly, I wasn't thinking about any of that coming down because I'm very grief stricken. I'm sad. You know, having to go through my parents' belongings is, you know, just something I never envisioned I'd have to do. And so I'm not, I don't think anybody is going to be able to do this themselves and clearly think out what needs to be done. From the moment I spoke to Will, he gave me a roadmap to exactly what we were going to do. And he gave me very simple tasks for me to do to keep me busy while he was doing the more important tasks. We were talking about packing everything up and going to market. And as we were looking at stuff and we had the movers and they were putting everything on our, the U-Haul truck, you know, we were saying, wow, this is a lot of stuff and we still had a lot of ways to go. And I remembered an email we had uh, got from Craigslist a couple of days before and I called the guy and I said to him, hey, are you still interested? He said, absolutely. He said, I will be there tomorrow. He said, this is what I do. He said, I am going to buy everything. No worries. We'll negotiate some sort of fair price. He said, it's going to take me about two hours. He didn't lie. We kept going. I told him this time learning from my experience of the gentleman with the cars. Will said to me, let's just keep going. We kept on packing the truck. We kept on labeling all our items. The guy came in, half the truck was packed. He knew it, we had taken pictures so that he could see before we had packed stuff what stuff looked like. So remember that guys, you need to take pictures, 
keep your mojo going, get it on the truck, or wherever you're gonna sell it, but take pictures so that, you know, if somebody, like we got lucky, somebody comes in to buy the estate, you could show them what they're buying. And that was it. We made a deal with him. He came today and with his team and they took the stuff away. I think for what the gentleman took out, it was well worth the price. And you know, you have to factor in the headache, you have to factor in the aches and pains of being older, you know, tired, you know, it, it's just much easier. Sometimes peace of mind is easier, remember that. The only thing I'm gonna tell anybody out there is, you cannot do this alone. If you think you can, you're kidding yourself. It's too emotional, it's too messy. You know, you're gonna find things that you never thought you were gonna find and you're not gonna know what to do with them. And you, perhaps you might give things away that are very valuable because there are people that come out of the woodwork that are gonna want those things and they're going to lie to you. You need a third party to be able to guide you. I encourage anybody to make sure that it, when they're in this situation, they reach out to a company like WorthPoint to help them.